Once we have a file that we're ready to print, uh, a 3D model that's repaired, so it's a solid model, um, we have it scaled down right, um, we can open it in Slicer. And Slicer is going to be our program that prepares it for the 3D printer, actually creates the G code that we run on the 3D printer. Um, so Slicer is a free program you can download from the internet, and um, it has a million different options that you can change, but we're just going to worry about a few of them. Um, now, when you download it and first run it, it's going to have a startup wizard that asks you all kinds of questions about what kind of printer you have, what size your filament is, um, and you can just use all the default values on the startup because we are going to load a configuration file from uh, Lulzbot's website, or probably whatever kind of printer you have, um, they'll probably have a page that lets you download um, profiles. So this is uh, a text file. So if I click on one of these, it just gives me a text file that has all this information about um, what the acceleration needs to be, what the fill density is, um, all these different options that tell Slicer about our printer so it can generate code that runs on it. Um, but uh, we don't want a plain, we don't want to look at the text, we want to save it in a configuration file. So we're going to hit right click on um, the quality and the material that we want. So we're going to do a medium detail uh, PLA print. And so we can right click on that and save the link. Um, it gives you a really descriptive file name, so that's good. Save it and download, it's fine. Um, and we go back to Slicer, and we get um, Slicer, preference, or I'm sorry, let's see, file, load, config. Um, find the configuration file you just downloaded, uh, medium PLA, no support, and um, that fills in a bunch of numbers in the print settings, in the filament settings, in the printer settings, um, so that the bed size, the size of filament. Um, oh, if it doesn't look like this, before I go any further, you want to make sure that um, if you go to preferences, you can choose from simple and expert. There's a few options that we're going to mess with that are only available in expert mode, so make sure you have expert enabled, um, and that'll tell you to restart the program, but just uh, expert mode is what we're looking at now. Um, okay, so that configuration file did most of the work for us. It told it how fast to go, um, told it what temperatures to, wait, did it tell it what temperatures to use? I don't even know. Um, that is in filament settings, print settings. Um, no, so we're going to preheat the printer anyway. Um, so we're going to tell the printer what temperatures to be at ourselves. Um, okay, so... That did a lot of the work for us, but we can decide to change a few things. Um, so the layer height is good. Uh, infill is a common thing that we can decide to change. So I'm going to print some finger puppet heads. So I'm going to make them hollow, 0% infill. You can also choose to make it solid. That takes forever. Uh, or anywhere in between. 40% will give you a really strong part. I find that even a 15% infill uh, is a, a pretty strong part. But uh, if you're if your part will print out hollow, um, by all means, hit 0% fill density. It'll be a lot faster. Um, so that's fill density. We can also change um, the layers. OK, so for my finger puppets, I want it to uh, print a hole in the bottom. I don't want it to print a bottom at all. So I can take this number down to 0. Um, but that'll make it so it doesn't stick very well to the bed. So I want to add um, support material. I want to add a raft. So you can add a raft, and that's going to, if I mouse over this, will tell me what to do. Ah. The object will be raised by this number of layers, and support material will be generated under it. So raft is really helpful. Um, to help it stick to the bed. Um, you can click this box to generate support material if uh, you feel that your object is going to need it. Um, so Slicer doesn't decide if your object needs support or not. You have to tell it what to do. Um, so for my head, um, here we got it right here. Um, this isn't going to need any support. It'll print just as it is. Hollow, no support, it'll print really fast. Um, but if you've got like some hair or some hats floating in the empty air, you want to click this and generate support material. Um, so we got all that selected. So once you've changed what you uh, want to adjust, um, one last thing I'll recommend is to uncheck this box under layers and perimeters. Uncheck 
avoid crossing perimeters. This is a, uh, an option that um, I think is for particular kinds of printers. It says if you have a Bowden extruder, I don't think I do. Uh, and, but it really slows down um, the G-code generation. So you want to uncheck that box, uh, otherwise it'll take forever to slice. Uh, but once we've made all those adjustments, we can add our part. Um, we've got Patrick's head right here. And hit export G-code. Patrick.gcode will be a good name. Uh, and since this is such a small file with 0% infill, it won't take very long to slice. Um, bigger files will still take several minutes, but um, as long as you have this unchecked, uh, it won't take half an hour. Like this, this really slows it down. So make sure that's unchecked. Um, and now it's done. So we'll uh, start the next video on how to actually uh, get that print over to the printer. So that's all for now.